I absolutely love Star Trek. The shows can be hit or miss at times, but when it's done right, like the vast majority of The Next Generation was, it is fantastic. A vision of the future that is utopic instead of dystopic, where people try to solve their problems with words instead of guns. But in the later TV shows, that was often thrown out the window in favor of higher action and, more importantly, higher viewership. Elite Force is based on one of those series, specifically Star Trek Voyager. Voyager certainly isn't the worst of the Star Trek TV shows that honor belongs to Enterprise as far as I'm concerned, but it had a lot of really awful episodes like the Warp 10 one. I don't even want to think about it. This tendency towards awful episodes in the actual TV show it was based on didn't really give me a lot of hope for Elite Force's story, but that is the first of many surprises in this game. Not only is the story of Elite Force pretty damn good by video game standards, especially at the time, it outshines most of the episodes the actual TV show Star Trek Voyager had to offer, making it a really weird feeling and reminding me what a neat concept Voyager is, even if it was only properly executed on very rarely. Each mission in the game feels like an independent episode of the show, and they're all pieced together quite nicely with interludes on the ship. Voices, sound effects, music, it's all incredibly spot on, especially given when this came out. You play a member of Voyager's hazard team. Basically, they're special ops that, as far as I can remember, didn't exist in the real show and ostensibly exist to do anything dangerous, but really just ends up shooting a whole bunch of stuff in the face, which at first seems to oppose the entire spirit of Star Trek, though they find clever little ways to hand wave that away and make their actions better in retrospect. And while those moments do feel like cop-outs, they do manage to keep the game within the boundaries of what most people would accept as Star Trek while still making the concessions they need to make in order to make it an enjoyable shooter. And that's what's even more incredible than the developer's ability to believably contain elite force within the Star Trek canon, their ability to make a fast-paced shooter. If you've been playing this at the time, you might have already been fully aware of this fact. This is Raven. They make Heretic and Hexen. They can make a damn good shooter. Much like their earlier games, it's based on tech created by id, this one only came out a year after Quake 3, and it's built on that engine, which not only gives you a good idea of the graphical fidelity, but also of how it plays. Of course, the game moves extremely quickly, just like you'd expect it to, but something I would not have expected from a Star Trek game is the wide variety of available weapons. Now, that was key to shooters at the time, and this game has a ton of different phasers, disruptors, a few cobbled together things. All of them use different mechanics, allowing you to pick the one you like without feeling obligated to use a specific one all the time, because it's just the best. Weapon balance is an underrated but very important part of designing a shooter. As a huge fan of the super fast paced shooter, it's always fun to find a good one I haven't played yet. And not only does Elite Force scratch that itch, but it does justice to a franchise I absolutely love, one that sadly hasn't gotten a lot of great games over the years. So I'm not only recommending Elite Force to people who love Star Trek or people who love fast paced shooters, I'm recommending it to either, and I fully believe both those groups will get a ton of enjoyment out of it. Like most older PC games, it's real easy to get a hold of a copy of this. It's real cheap on eBay, and relatively easy to find in the less savory places on the internet. A note of caution though, the PS2 version of this is hot garbage. This was still an era where they hadn't quite figured out how to make first person shooters work on consoles, and even more importantly, it runs at under 30 frames a second. Just don't. The game is 15 years old, so any even remotely modern PC will be able to run this with no problems. And with just a few minor tweaks, you can get it running even on Windows 10 in full 1080p. Every Monday, I look at games that are at least 10 years old, and I review them not as they existed then, but as they exist now. Historical context is important, but so is their ultimate playability today, and that's what I try to focus on. If you like that idea, be sure to subscribe so you can see my latest reviews, and if you like this review in particular, be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.